I don't know about you, but there is always within me as I wrestle with the texts of Scripture, this sense of sort of a number of things all going on at once. On the one, one hand, there are these texts of terror that are alluded even in the beginning of the Joel passage of marauding arm, armies sent by God to avenge all that has been done wrong and all that Israel has done. Judgment, full, complete, that results in genocide. That's the reason when Joel calls everyone together, he literally includes even the nursing babes in Where am I in the midst of that? And so if I'm called to turn, which is the very essence of what it means to repent, to whom am I turning? And from what? <laughs> am I turning to a God who because of the incompleteness of my turning, will reject the turning that I make. How, how complete must that turning be? How can I wrestle with, not just the little places inside of me and the big places, where I'm consciously choosing to do wrong. It's never that simple. There's also always issues of motivation that stir within the surface, like you know, voices sort of speaking up into the darkness that are profoundly unclear. And it's never merely entirely individualistic. There's this kind of social complicity. When I buy a garment at this store, am I supporting sweat, sweatshop children in Thailand? I mean, there is this kind of global web of which I am inextricably in this life apart. Read City of God. There is a structure here that is as sinful and as broken and perhaps even as evil as anything that goes on within my heart. And I am a part of that. And if there is anything that the texts make clear, my complicity is an issue with God. So it, it, it's never the, a moral inventory of my own private piccadillos or the obvious places in my life where I'm a relational failure. And how much do I not know? That's what I mean by how complete must my turning be. And in so... Do I turn as much as I am able at this point within my life? And God, is that enough to hold off the marauding army that may be coming against my own body, soul, and spirit, attacking my household? Is it not true that each of us goes into a default mode, especially when something bad happens, and we go, what have I? So to come to Ash Wednesday where I am I'm called to repent for me is hardly an easy thing. It, 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 is, it is not something at one level to which I look forward at all uh, because it raises for me so many unanswerable questions. So what is the word of clarity in the midst of this seemingly impossible task. What spares me from entering into this mass of darkness, regardless of what examination of conscience form I use, approved or not, that doesn't quite frankly just send me down into the rabbit hole of finding more and more and more at fault, where I do not no long where I am no longer in fact able to see light. One word, one verse for me today.
2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin. Notice, not to take on sins, but to be sin. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Right now, that's about all the light I've got. Backed up by the continuing, unchanging witness of the man God, Jesus of Nazareth. Had I not had those things, I would not even begin to think about turning. But, because there is in fact that clarity and that light that really shines into the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. I can know that no matter how I am turning, no matter how incomplete that might be, the very, not similar to a small child learning how to ride a bicycle and you keep the child keeps falling off and the parent goes, yeah, you did it a little better that time. Let's go again. <laughs> Knowing that eventually, eventually, that child will go flying down the sidewalk. Knowing that there is working in me, in the midst of that turning, the very hand of God turning me, inviting me to turn so that there will be a time, probably not in this life, where I too will go flying down the sidewalk with my arms not on the handlebars. That's where we're headed. Therefore, for that, I will continue to turn as incomplete as it might be and know that for my God, those feeble, broken, self-serving efforts are in fact things that he will take, break, bless, and distribute in the corners of my life that have yet to know this kind of strong, powerful, and unchanging love. That is why Ash wins. Otherwise, I can be way too facile, even though the clarity of the prayer book words are unflinching. So, let's get real, people. Don't be afraid to make the steps to turn, knowing that they will not be incomplete. Don't allow, if possible, the self-serving laziness of our own souls to let us off the hook, but instead be willing to turn, even though it might be painful, knowing that the one whom you meet meets you in loving kindness. As we said in staff yesterday, more often than not, it has to do with an incomplete seeing of Jesus. And that's the other piece of this, because as I make these incomplete terms, I will, in fact, by God's own promise, eventually see new things about him who loves me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who heals all my diseases, and who crowns me with loving kindness. For that, that we might become the righteousness of God, let's step into the turning. Thank mm -hmm. you.